people tuned in to SmackDown to hopefully see the real leader of the bloodline, but all they got was the fake tribal chief. And no, we're not talking about Solo Sokoa. We're talking about Roman Reigns. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. The so-called big dog isn't that big, especially when you compare him to The Rock. When you compare him to Dwayne Johnson. Apparently, people were tuning in to see The Rock tonight. But all they got was rock bottom when Rocky Maya fear wasn't he there. The Rock is the final boss. Roman Reigns is like the chapter six boss. He's not quite the final one, but he's with the midway boss. And then the rest of them are the prologue. Aye, I mean, fucking <laughs> Tamatonga. I mean, what's Why that guy? Why would he guy? be in the game? He's on the demo version. He's in the, yeah, the better version that never seen the light of day. But in all seriousness, yeah, people fought The Rock. But again, I think if we were going to get The Rock, they would have hyped that up, wouldn't they? The people here, they still believed. I don't believe anymore, though. Yeah, look, wrestling's that bad these days. If, if The Rock's going to be there, they're hyping it up for they need to, to. to pop a rating. They are. Yeah. Now, yeah, they can give you a surprise on pay-per-view, because that doesn't really matter. And, you know, <laughs> they're already getting their nine ninety nine a month. But when it comes to shows now, a surprise returns are pretty much gone. Yeah. Because they, they know that the numbers are that bad, that any time there's somebody coming back that can possibly increase the number improve the number, move the needle, as Roman Reigns would say. They've got to announce them in advance. But I'll, I'll tell you this, right? I When I did the ratings for this, I actually didn't give The Rock any credit. I just gave Roman Reigns credit because I thought The Rock's return at Bad Blood was so lacklustre that, I don't know, coming in this... At least Roman Reigns was advertised. At least he was promoted for SmackDown. So in the ratings video... I gave Roman Reigns the credit for the increase in ratings this week, and I'm going to still give him the credit because, yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting The Rock tonight. Goldberg out through The Rock at Bad Blood, uh, what was I even going to say there? Yes, it was uh, to do with the fact that I, I heard a Kevin Nash TikTok, pretty much him saying that when Jinder Mahal was champion back in 2017, on the USA Network, SmackDown did 2.5 million, and then the addition he was talking about with Cody Rhodes is down at 1.4 million. And albeit, yeah, we're not at 1.4 million this week, we're at 1.6, but that's still 900,000 off Jinder Mahal, right? It's like, we all we hear about wrestling's in a boom, boom period. period. It's not. You know what I think the difference is? I just think McMahon was set in his ways, and he wasn't fit, you know, he wasn't very, like, he didn't get, he didn't get the WWE out. I feel like with Triple H, he's far more open in this modern, in the last few years, you've seen, like, the Netflix deal go over the line. I feel like the, the only thing McMahon really did in the last bunch of years was probably the, the Saudi deal. Yeah, but you know Do what? Do you know how Triple H has made it more marketable? No, I agree. And I think McMahon, he, he, you know, because it was private for so long and it was McMahon's company, I think he was just set in his ways. Just because your company's more, oh, a wee appearance for Cardi, but it doesn't fucking mean you're, it's a boom period. The numbers don't lie. Jinder Mahal's getting, like, a million more than Cody Rhodes. Yeah, they can bring in Cardi B or whatever, but see the next week when she's not there, see the people that tuned in the previous week to see her, they don't give a shit. Yeah. WWE, they've never been able to, do, they can't maintain, even if they get a spike for bringing in somebody famous, it's not like they maintain it, so at the end of the day, what's the point? You're, you're, oh, you're getting a wee decent spike here and a spike there, but I mean, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I mean, I think a lot of people would accept that wrestling was dying in 2017, so it's scary that, you know, six years later, seven years later, that Jinder Mahal was getting almost a million more fuels as champion than Cody Rhodes is. And see, I think I would say... On like, the same network. See, on the same show. See, if wrestling's in a boom period, I, I think it would filter it bet between the companies. We've seen that in the late 90s, right? All three companies, even ECW, man, getting recognition. Look at Darby Allen at that baseball game. They didn't know who he was. Oh, look at uh, Odd Redwards and Darby Allen. And, and AEW's got all the money, right, in the world, and it's got a good TV deal. They're bragging about 185 million. So if it were in a boom period and WWE's in a boom period, shouldn't AEW be able to latch on to that? Yeah. Because well, we're not in a fucking boom period and it's shite. I mean, if, I think if wrestling was in a boom period, the boom would be filtering from the top company through to the other companies. Yeah, it's like seeing you look at the 90s, right? WCW took off in 96 with the NWO. I guarantee you WWF wouldn't have took off as well as it did in 97 without WCW taking off in 96. That's just the way it works. W at the NWO made wrestling cool and you know, WWE H took the mantle. Hogan in the 80s. Yeah, Hogan was the top guy, but I guarantee you wrestling got bigger, other people got bigger just because Hogan was big. Yes. 
And Hogan's success filtered down to other people. You can't say fucking Roman Reigns is... Oh, is Roman Reigns making carrying cross, big? No, I fuck he's making nothing. Anyway, put me on the cross, nail me to it. It's time to talk about SmackDown. We start in quarter one. 8 o'clock to 8.15, Bad Blood recap, Jimmy Uso, Roman Reigns, live promo, strongest uh, quarter of the night, 1.771 million, and the strongest key demo of the night, 697,000, uh, just your typical Roman Reigns promo, he comes out, you know, he moves the jaw from left to right, apparently, I don't understand wrestling or wrestling psychology, because I, I don't think that the whole jaw thing is the best thing that I've ever seen, so, uh, apologies to anybody, offended yes Roman Reigns he's got an amazing jawline and I'm sure you guys love it when he moves his jaw from left to right I'm sure you you wish he was moving his jaw on something of yours but uh whatever Roman Reigns sucks right this guy doesn't impress me it's just boring it's the same old shit we've seen this bloodline promo for four years now five we don't need to see it anymore Reigns comes dun -dun 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 -dun, stands there moves his jaw acknowledge me I mean, come on. We've seen it. We don't want to see it again. No, it's mad though, right? People bang on about Evolution. Evolution didn't form the, what, February, March 2003. And see, by 2005, Mania was dissolved. So yeah. Just over two years, the Bloodline's fucking surpassed that. We're, we're looking at... I know there's been different versions of the Bloodline, but it's ran its coat. The best thing in wrestling, man, it, it doesn't last forever. And I don't want to go into remember when, but just look, up, look down the years, man. <laughs> There's peaks. <laughs> WWE is dragging this out. People say the best fairs in the NWO was the one that only lasted like a month. <laughs> yeah. So it is what it is. Um, just, I don't know, man. Roman Reigns. I've never really rated the guy. I'll give him credit, right? He's a, he's a bigger star than pretty much everybody else today. I'm not going to deny that, but I just don't get, you know, extremely excited whenever I see Roman Reigns. I don't. No, I don't, and... Him being on this show did nothing for me. It's the his, same shite. His promos don't excite me. His matches don't excite me. If they announce that Roman Reigns is on SmackDown, I'm not thinking, wow, I need to I need to make sure that I see SmackDown tonight. I need to tune in to see the blue brand. It's just if Roman Reigns was building a bloodline army to take on The Rock's bloodline army, I would care more. See Roman Reigns getting the Usos back together to fight Solo Sokoa and his band of jobbers, that does nothing for me. Ah, down since day one, eh? Right, anyway, let's move on to quarter two, 8, 15 to 8, 30. LA Knight versus Carmelo Hayes. This lost 7%, down to 1.648 million, so over uh, 123,000 lost. And then 8% down in the key demo to 641,000. So, yeah, drop off there, 7% in viewership, 8% in key demo. Quarter three, 830 to 845. Knight versus Hayes continued. Post-match with Andrade, we got Cody Rhodes and Jimmy Uso backstage, we got Lash, uh, Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson cutting a promo, and we then got the Rhodes, Owens and Randy Orton live angle, and this went up 2% in viewership to 1.682 million, and it went up 2% in key demo to 654,000, so I'm going to assume that's down to the whole Owens, Rhodes, Randy Orton thing, but... I mean, people are butt-licking that at the minute, man. Oh, Kevin Owens on Twitter. I, I sent a tape in to Triple H on Raw, but he didn't post it. And if he doesn't post it on SmackDown and show the footage, I'm not going to be happy. And people are like, oh, this is the realest shit we've seen in years. Who gives a fuck with Kevin? I mean, Kevin Owens is sending in VHS tapes for Triple H to show. And people are like, cinema? Cinema? Well, sure, remember they did that with Michael Cole for about six, for about two months straight or something? Yeah, no, that's sucked, right? But for oh, me, here's a tape. At least that kind of suits the Wyatts, like the grainy VHS filter. What, fat boy Owens? What could, what could Kevin Owens possibly... Can, can you not just about? send out a WhatsApp video or something? I mean, seriously. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, no, but the feud behind Cody, it's like, there's nothing secretive about it. He's obviously disgruntled about the fact that Cody was teaming up with Roman Reigns and there's been a few... Dodgy finishes this match. This lately. is going to be dealt with behind closed doors, and that's official. A quarter four, eight forty five to nine pm. Chelsea Green, Piper Nevin, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargo backstage. And we got Belair and Cargo versus Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson. People crying. This match lasted two minutes. Not sure what they were expecting. A team for NXT to come and beat the champs. Not happening. And then we get Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton and Nick Aldis backstage. This is down four percent to one point six one one million. And down 3% in the key demo. 
Quarter five, nine o'clock to nine fifteen. Nia Jax, Tiffany, Naomi, Lib Morgan, Live Angle. Then we got Naomi versus Jax, and this went up two percent to one point six four three million, and up four percent in the key demo to six hundred and fifty six thousand. So quarter five, uh, get getting the increase there, but it's a small increase, and it's nothing to nothing to write home about, nothing to celebrate. Yeah, if there was bigger people in it, even though Nia Jax is pretty big. I think they would have went up a wee bit more. Probably. Quarter 6, 9.15 to 9.30. Naomi versus Jax continued. Post-match with Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Dominic Mysterio, Rhea Ripley. Uh, we then got Hayes, Aldas and Legado del Fantasma backstage. We've got a solo support promo. Then we've got the Street Profits DIY, Nick Aldas, Orton, Owens backstage. This went down 2% to 1.604 million and down 4% in the key demo to 632,000. Then we're going to quarter 7. 9.30 to 9.45 p.m. And, and, and see, to me, this just tells you really what you need to know. Quarter 7 was purely just Jimmy Uso versus Solo Sokoa, and it went down. Yeah. It was the lowest rate at quarter of the show. Lost 1%, did a 1.59 million, and it was the only quarter to go below 1.6 million. Also went down in the key demo. 1% did 627,000, and it was also the lowest key demo quarter of the show. Um, you can talk about, oh, it's quarter seven, it's this, it's that. At the end of the day, it's, it's the main event. It's Jimmy Uso, it's Solo Sokoa, it's two guys in the bloodline. That's you know Two guys that are related to Roman Reigns and The Rock, and they've done the square root of hee-haw. And let's be honest, man, people knew that Roman Reigns was going to be involved oh, wow. here in some capacity. So... That's just a poor number, man. It's it a really poor is. number, uh, but also, I mean, it's beginning with half an hour to go. It's like, I feel like SmackDown just has a... a f I mean, Raw as well, to be fair, but see when a match begins. I mean, if you care about a match and, and you've got half an hour, I think, great. Back in the day, man, Austin against Taker, give me fucking half an hour of that bad boy, but Jimmy Uso's return, man, after, what, Mania six, seven months? It is dead already, doesn't it? It's just, it's just absolutely done. Jimmy Uso, man, not really much to say about the guy. You know, he's, he's I mean, he makes me want to greet my eyes, but not really, but uh, not really protect it, is he? Like, like see Jimmy Uso and Solo, who, who feels like a bigger deal, in your opinion? I think they both suck. Yeah, I think they both suck. And obviously, the ratings think they both suck. The viewers think they both suck. I mean, I was going to say I prefer Jimmy, but I still can't get over that Uso match at Mania. That was shocking. That was shocking. Anyway, we're going to quarter eight. 9.45 to 10pm, Jimmy Uso versus Soul, Soul Sokoa has continued. we got post-match with the Bloodline and Roman Reigns. This went up 5% to 1.67 million and went up 6% the key demo to 665,000. So, yeah, it was the third highest quarter of the show and it was the second highest key demo quarter of the show. So it's an increase at the end, but still, I mean, it's not massive here. And it certainly didn't do what the opening quarter did, so just disappointing in the end. No, it is disappointing. And back to the Usos, I think they're some of the worst workers in the company. Do you not think so? I, I think especially, I think they need someone to carry them. I, their, their match at Mania was, see for twins? It's like, look how many Hardy Boy matches you've watched, man, and they were great. I, I just don't understand why the match was so bad. I don't think Solo's like... I think Roman Reigns is by far the best out of them all. Apart from The Rock. Obviously The Rock, right? The Rock. I mean, look at, look at The Rock at 52 at Mania. Guy was going like 50 minutes, man. He had fucking... For, you know, 12 years previously against Cena, he was fucked. But I don't know what he's been drinking. He must have got in good shape for that match. But I tell you, it was, it was awful. And they, people talk about Jacob Fatu like he's Jacob Fatu. And then the other two, Botchaloa. What's in the Samoan bloodline? Tommy, Lua, Tommy Lunga and Botchaloa. Oh, yeah. Samoan bloodline. The piss line, man, it's a load of shit. Rikishi acting the big man. Because, because Vince Russo says, what is it? Vince Russo doesn't think his son's great. You know what, Rikishi, I don't, I don't think your son's great. What is your big fat ass going to fucking do about it? Guarantee you if Brock Lesnar came out and said Jimmy Uso, or G Uso sucks, but Rikishi wouldn't be challenging him to a fight. Yeah, I think it's pathetic what he said Russo, so no, Russo's not allowed an opinion? There was no malice from Russo. You know, he was simply saying, Jay Uso has been there for 15 years. Why is he crying about the IC Championship? That's pretty much what he said. Aye. Pretty much. 
I mean, if we're being honest, wasn't Rikishi kind of crying about the fact he's feuding for the IC? He's like, oh, Jay Uso should be winning the World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> Since he fucking wins the IC, man, Rikishi's waving his fat arse of it. Aye, well, Rikishi's arse stinks. This show wasn't that great. Uh, we'll see what happens. What paper views are coming up next? Grand Jewel. Uh, what's the one after that? Survivor Series. No, Cr- that, no that one. No. I like Survivor Series, but you know what? I, I hate war games, so it is what it is. Anyway, guys, that's it. There's your ratings. We'll catch you in the next one. Bean Fog Wrestling. Thanks for watching, and peace.